Welcome to the podcast, Clay. Thanks so much, Peter. Uh, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, my pleasure. So um, I know you've been you've been uh, working at Galileo. You were yeah for many many years. But I'd like to at least you know take get, get give the listeners some background about yourself, sort of what you did before that time, and maybe even leading into why you decided to start Galileo. Yeah, my background is in operating systems and technology um, communications. Um, I had taken a prior company public, um, been retired for about six years before uh, starting Galileo, and that was uh, 20 years ago. So that's my background is in technology. Um, Galileo was um, really started to um, solve a, a problem that I saw in um, financial systems and uh, transformation that I felt like was badly needed to match the Internet age. And um, in the last, you know, call it five to seven years, we've really seen a, a boom in, in fintech and Galileo has been at a, an integrated position to benefit from that. Okay. Okay. So then maybe, um, you know, what, when you started, because obviously, you know, 18 years is an eternity in fintech. I mean, fintech didn't really uh, exist as a term. Obviously, there was companies like PayPal and a handful of others that were trying to do some, to do some things in financial technology. But why don't you just take us back to that time and what, what were you actually, what was the problem you were trying to solve when you started? Well, what we saw was uh, systems that were, um, you know, large, rigid, monolithic, um, difficult to work with, not, uh, not really uh, API based at all, um, not created in a way that would be a flexible, scalable uh, architect in a way that could solve many diverse problems. Um, just not uh, well suited to um, to solving the, the the problems that I felt like uh, we felt like could be uh, and and needed to be solved in payments. Um, many of the card platforms were uh, architected to handle the inputs and outputs of a card transaction. We don't do that. We organize information very similar to the way um, it might occur, for example, in the file system on your computer or something such as that. It just happens to be financial information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's, um, you know, maybe you could just sort of in, fast forward us through the last 18 years really quickly in, uh, uh, in just a, a minute or so. And let us like, tell us, talk, talk to you about how the, how the company has evolved um, really up into, uh, up into this year. You know, if you go back and, and, um, in payments and banking, uh, what you find is, um, you know, credit, you know, initially starting in the general store, moving to gas stations and department stores, um, eventually banks, um, Visa, Bank of America had an idea that um, we could get invite other banks to extend a brand, get merchants on board. That really was all focused on credit, uh, consumer credit in particular, and revolving credit um, bank issued. Um, and sometime after that, debit came along. Again, it was a, a bank product, um, access to your DDA funds. Uh, and then, so you had traditional credit and traditional debit. And then anything that wasn't that was sort of thrown into this other bucket. Uh, and that bucket was uh, about the same time that Galileo started, came about. And um, so that was uh, the problem that we were trying to solve was um, many different um, business uh, applications and, and diverse uh, types of uh, situations. And uh, so it's, it's uh, our, our ability to be able to solve that um, has, has lent itself to uh, being able to, <clears throat> to um, be kind of uh, in the right place at the right time uh, mm-hmm. for FinTech. And uh, now we see companies like, you know, uh, TransferWise, Chime, Aspiration, Greenlight, Robinhood, Monzo, SoFi, Revolut, Remitly, PaySafe, just to name a few, um, you know, Galileo clients, uh, by one count, um, recent count, um, Galileo is powering 95% of all digital banking in North America. Um, wow. we, um, we have uh, five out of the top five uh, UK firms as clients. Uh, the top um, uh, uh, application in uh, Canada is on our platform. Uh, the number one in the U.S., the number one in Mexico. Um, we've just been in Latin America for two months, but of the top 20 down there, we've already signed five. I think we're going to sign all 20 as clients. So, um, you know, Galileo's done extremely well in, in, in uh, API-based um, 
uh, payments and banking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that that's that's that is a pretty impressive and pretty impressive track record. And uh, you know, it's interesting because a lot of the companies that you you mentioned there and the ones you're powering, they didn't exist. You know, uh, certainly ten years ago, and, and some of them didn't exist five years ago. And um, I, I'm curious about the you know, you've you've had this front row seat to this you know explosion in in fintech where you've been able to you know see you know basically a, a banking industry or, or you know there's certainly um there's been new products that have come out in financial services consistently over the last you know say 50 years but um you know really we have this we, we have this kind of explosion in the last five years where things are really changing i'd love to kind of get your take on on how you sort of you know, you've, you've, you've had your business for what, whatever, 18 years or, or so, but in the last five years, things just seem to have really taken off. Um, yeah. give, us, give us your take on, you know, on how that's happened and, and how you've been able to take advantage of that. Yeah, somebody mentioned to me that we were um, an overnight success 18 years in the making. So right. um, um, it's been, you're right, it's been interesting to watch. And, and my own personal belief about this is that we're still in the early days. Uh, of fintech, so you know a lot of people are thinking, "Wow, we've seen a lot of progress in the last five years," and that's true. We really have. But my own personal uh, belief is that uh, we're going to see a lot of change in the next five years. Um, and so we saw this with the internet. You know, the internet um, exploded, took off. Um, it's a big deal, uh, and then Internet 2.0 kind of came along, and we saw a bunch of new leaders emerge. And and my personal belief, we're going to see that again. Uh, in the world of fintech over the next five to 10 years. Um, there's still a lot of stories to be told. Um, I'm thinking of companies like Ageo uh, in India um, and mm -hmm. um, you know these global phenomenons that are uh, TikTok. Um, there's just a, a lot uh, of the, the world that is still yet to be defined. And so um, I, I believe that we're still very early. Uh, we are going to see a response uh, focused uh, largely on consumer by the incumbents, I believe. Uh, I believe that wave is coming. Galileo has already seen it. Uh, many of them are reaching out to Galileo to try and solve these types of problems. Um, and uh, we're also going to see and have seen, but we're going to see much more of the emergence of uh, big tech uh, in the world of uh, payments. So um, we're, we're by no means um, done. In fact, we're just, just, just barely beginning. Right. Right. Yeah. And then, um, you know, on that, we sort of we feel like that, like we only just begun, but there are certainly s some digital banks that have that have reached really impressive scale with several million uh, several million customers here in the U.S. Um, and, uh, yeah. and same with internationally. I mean, you look at Latin America. I mean, you've got New Bank with more than ten million, or I can't remember what the latest number is. It's way more than ten million, yeah. I think, as far as yeah. customers there. And so, as we grow, I mean, there's going to be, you know, and, and, and as these these companies mature, we have the the need for really, you know, bank like reliability, bank like dependability, where you go, you go to the ATM or you go to the, you load up your mobile app and it's just, it always is working. It's a hundred percent of the hundred percent right. of the time, that's the sort of thing. So what, what are you doing at Galileo to really ensure that, um, that you can provide that kind of the, the, the level of uptime that, and the dependability that some of the largest banks have, you know, have really, you know, made us all accustomed to? Well, um, that's a great, great, great question. And there's a lot that we're doing there. Um, I, I, I want to, I want to take just a slight exception with your, your point, which is uh, that big banks have made us accustomed to actually, um, you know, um, if you look back over 2019, Wells Fargo had an outage that lasted 10 days. Um, and Bank of America had an outage that affected 60 million customers. Capital One had an outage that affected a day long 106, 106 million customers. So um, the big banks aren't immune from this. Um, you know, Amazon, the king of um, <clears throat> the king of data centers, had an outage which affected 2.3 million businesses. I've personally been stranded by Delta Airlines, um, you know, three times, and not for flight shortages, but for IT outages. 
and uh, Apple, who spends trillions or billions at least uh, on uh, IT infrastructure, has uh, outages uh, almost continually. So outages are, are a phenomenon and a thing that um, goes along with technology, despite some of their um, biggest and, and best uh, and, and most diligent efforts um, on the part of the big banks and other technology firms. And, and Galileo is a part of that. Despite that, um, I agree with the thesis, which is, Galileo uh, as has done and is doing a lot. And we've had a, a very, very good track record um, related to, uh, to uptime, fortunately. Um, and um, you know, one of the things that got a lot of play was the incident in, in uh, October. And um, one of the things we've done since then, um, just to give you a sense, mm -hmm. we had a project um, after that called 10X. And what 10X uh, enabled us to do was uh, to scale to 10 times our largest um, our largest client. So and in short, what this was, was essentially um, 140 million active uh, accounts um, representing um, uh, somewhere on the order of 10 billion transactions and <clears throat> um, reaching scale of about 5,000 transactions per second. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing all that we can do. Um, to, to ensure that uh, we've got um, massive scale and capability. And the good news is the, the architecture is, you know, fully horizontally scalable, um, you know, very much like, like any uh, uh, well-architected, um, you know, cloud-based solution today. Right, right. And so, like, given, given the, the, the sort of the changing environment here over the last, you know, three months where there's been certainly lots of pockets of, of activity that has scaled dramatically. We've seen digital banks adding new customers, banks adding new deposits, um, you know, at, at record rates. Uh, yeah. So how, you know, how has this changing consumer behavior um, really impacted Galileo? Have you, have you been ramping up uh, along with, uh, with this increase in demand? Gal has seen massive growth um, since the beginning of um, the the pandemic. Um, just as an example, uh, I think about you know the the, the infrastructure we're using uh, right now, Zoom, and the growth that they've gone through, yep. uh, and the growth that Amazon. Quite honestly, you know, uh, we always hear that uh, you know Amazon was built for the pandem pandemic. Unfortunately, for many of us, uh, it, it was in place. But I would say that's true of digital banking as well. Um, our clients have seen just incredible growth um, over the last three months. And just to give you a sense of that, for existing business, um, Galileo uh, is, is up month over year of last month, 165%, uh, which is just, just absolutely incredible uh, growth. And so we're, we're, uh, we're, we're doing um, uh, all that we can. And fortunately, things are working extremely well right now. And uh, and growth has been incredible. We've got clients that are adding, in some cases, you know, 50,000 um, new accounts a day. Um, you know, many of them have got uh, waiting lists uh, um, of over a million and a million and a half um, uh, accounts that are waiting to get on. It's just really a function of card production, not not a function of scalability for us. Right. Uh, so there's there's uh, there's a lot that um, is is going on, and, and many of these uh, companies like a Chime. Um, a Robin Hood. Um, uh, we just saw recent numbers come out on current. Um, you know, these, these companies, uh, Dave.com, they've, they've all uh, scaled incredibly well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Galileo's powering all of that. Right, right. Okay, so, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I, I, I presume you might have seen the you know, the, the column by um, Matt Harris last year about embedded finance, because as you're talking and as I sort of look at Galileo, Galileo, I feel like, you know, you're really part of this movement towards embedded finance where, you know, you've got, you've, you know, maybe we step back and talk about Galileo Instant, which, you know, from my understanding of it is is sort of a way to kind of, it's like a plug and play for different kind of financial services. And, uh, it seems like this is a trend that's that's really going to get you know, it's it's getting going and it's and, and it's got legs as far as as far as I see. Would love to sort of get your firstly um, explain what Galileo Instant is and then talk maybe more broadly about the trend this trend towards embedded finance. You know, Galileo has built an incredible platform uh, for these digital banks that we've been talking about here this morning and. Um, 
uh, if you look at those digital banks and, and uh, new uh, digital bank coming along that um, wants to build a great consumer experience, and they've got some ideas around um, what they feel like that ought to look like. Um, Galileo tries to provide the services that, that would enable all of that, um, but the process to do it um, is expensive and it's timely. It takes, to, excuse me, it, it takes time. Um, and so, um, you know, for example, um, you know, you need, you would have needed to have raised several million dollars. You need to know something about um, banking and about fraud and about disputes and compliance and regulation and all of the rest of it. It's, it's expensive and it's, it's, um, it's, um, it's, it's not easy. It's difficult to get into, but there are many businesses that just simply want to make a payment. They don't want to be a payments company. Mm -hmm. They just want to make a payment. And so that's the, that's the, uh, thing that we're trying to do with Galileo Instant. It's a product we announced uh, late last year. Uh, we've been in beta um, over the last several months. Uh, the product is going live this month. Um, and we've had 450 companies uh, with inbound interest um, um, sign up for and, and gain access to uh, the APIs that, that power, uh, power Galileo Instant. To answer your question, um, the... Um, the, the problem that Gally Austin is trying to solve here is the, um, we, you know, I have a client, excuse me, a neighbor that is, uh, uh, he, he owns a welding, uh, a steel manufacturing company, uh, uses welders to uh, assemble this, this steel. 10,000 welders, and he asked me, he said, do you have a product that would allow me to pay my welders by the weld? And uh, I said, well, if you give me about two months, um, the answer to that is yes. Um, and, um, you know, so that's one application. Um, Google has uh, 23 million YouTube influencers that need to be paid every month. So if you think about that, um, and that particular portion of Google, I could imagine this doesn't necessarily want to be a, a payments company, although Google itself might be. Um, they just simply want to make a payment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there, so whether you're talking about a welding company or Google, we see thousands of these uh, these applications, and and we've we've uh, we've done some um, uh, engineering and, and recent testing around uh, what does it take to get into this um, this type of uh, uh, business, and we've reduced it from many many months. Um, you know, the the sales process can be months. The, Integration can be months. The the marketing ramp behind all of that on the part of our client can be many months. So you could see one of these uh, digital banks take anywhere from 12 to 24 months to really get started and and begin to to, to market their product. Uh, whereas on Galileo Instant, we've reduced that to um, a number of minutes. Um, mm -hmm. So somebody can come to uh, Galileo, um, the Galileo Instant product and uh, gain access to it, it's all API driven. And within a matter of minutes, we've eliminated all of the friction uh, that, that goes into uh, needing to make a payment. And uh, you can begin to do it. You can do it in a co-branded way. So Google could do it, co-branded YouTube, um, uh, et cetera. Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty powerful. And uh, you know, we've seen this on the acquiring side but not really much innovation here at all on the uh, issuing side. So I'm pretty excited about it. And these are the types of products that I was talking about uh, when I was mentioning earlier uh, around uh, FinTech 2.0. We've still got a lot of headroom, uh, another right. 20 years worth at least. Right. So do you, so you think then that we're going to see, I mean, the, the company you just mentioned there, the welder I and mean, Google, these are not financial firms, um, but they want, but, you know, obviously every single company on the planet has a financial function because otherwise right. that's, just, that's just a death by definition. So do you right. think what you're going to see is, you know, a range of companies, down, sounds like from what you're saying, even down to reasonably small companies that can offer their own sort of co-branded financial services. Is that, is, is that where we're moving? Yeah, we've seen uh, you know law firms that need to pay um, uh, folks that are running satchels around town on bicycles. Um, we've seen a, a restaurant firm that um, is paying millions of restaurant workers, uh, and they want to do it you know on a on an interval that doesn't necessarily match to uh, what what is available in uh, traditional applications. And it's not again, it's not easy. It's not easy to find these types of applications uh, or en enabling technologies and 
um, to my knowledge, they're not out there today at all. Um, and uh, so I, I, I can see this ranging from big to small um, in terms of, uh, of the application of it. Right, yeah, makes sense. Okay, so I want to I want to talk about SoFi. Um, obviously, we you know, know the company really well. Um, you know, we had Anthony Anthony Noto on the show last year, um, and you know you've been you know they were you know, you've had a partnership with them for for quite some time. So maybe we could just start with um, you know maybe if you could give some sense of the, of the of the history of your of your partnership with SoFi and when you when you sort of started to think that there could be more than just a, a commercial relationship. You know, in my first meeting with Anthony um, Noto, um, I was impressed with him. He's a great leader who's uh, got incredible uh, skills. He's an uh, analyst, um, but as a CEO, he's, he's uh, driven. He's um, he's great. He's smart. He's quick on his feet. Um, he's great in front of uh, a group of analysts. So if you've had him on the show, you've seen probably some of those skills come through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, uh, he and I hit it off. Um, we share a vision. Uh, SoFi is, in my view, has been uh, fairly quiet, although they've raised an incredible amount of money. Um, they, at one point, had um, raised more money than all other fintechs combined. Uh, you know, two and a half billion dollars. Um, and uh, so very, very impressive on the lending side, um, making their products available through um, consumer packaged uh, type of approach. Um, and the idea was, could we take those products, um, wrap Galileo's enterprise grade EPIs around them and make them available uh, out to uh, our clients um, where we've done really well with the uh, clients on the uh, debit and banking side and pro provide these lending products um, in such a way that it's easy to integrate, uh, easy to uh, gain access. Um, and um, it's a, it's an exciting uh, opportunity. I, I think this gives Galileo a, um, you know, several year, three year to five year head start over anybody that's even uh, uh, thinking about doing anything similar because it takes a long time to build um, uh, what SoFi has built. It's a, right. it's a really incredible business and, and very capital intensive. Yeah, I know. And I think, I mean, it's, it's sort of, it's been running for years and obviously, you know, you know, Anthony hasn't been there since the beginning, but it's, you know, SoFi had built up a machine, particularly when it comes to consumer lending, student loans, um, you know, student loan refinancing. They, they, oh, mortgages. You know, yeah, yeah, they invented student loan refinancing, basically. And, uh, yeah. you know, they have, they're, they're a very impressive company. But so then from, from what I gather, from what you, what you just said there, it sounds like what you're saying is that a company like Chime, a company like Dave, a company like uh, you know, Revolut may, may offer lending and it could be powered by SoFi. Is that, is that kind of what you're saying? Right. So the lending products, um, the way that I think about uh, SoFi is really is a, uh, yes, they've got a great consumer front end and a great consumer experience. Galileo powers the SoFi money side of that. But um, they really have a, on the back end, they have this, uh, um, I refer to it as a digital securization pipeline. Right. Uh, and it's, it's, it's an incredible business. And uh, any, anybody, uh, anybody that wants to try and um, uh, rebuild or compete, it's got, uh, as you say, it's got a lot of work to do to, right. to, to right. put all of that yeah. in place. Yeah, I mean, they, and they, what we want to do is make that. Sorry, just to finish that thought. What we want to do is make that available through uh, through our APIs. Right, right. Yeah, that's that could be super interesting because, as you say, I mean, so far I have, uh, you know, when you look at sort of the securitization volume in the in the consumer loan space and the student loan space, they they really have uh, have dominated, and it's it's been it's been really interesting. So, be interesting to see how that if that you know that 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 that. Um, really expands so so i take it then from what you're saying you 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 know didn't run like a you know a full like acquisition process where you wanted to see you wanted to hear from a bunch of different uh, uh you know potential acquirers is this something that you really just you you started talking with anthony and the team at SoFi and you thought wow we really should we should do something more together Right. It was more the latter. There was uh, definitely not a process that we ran. Um, timing of the deal was interesting. Uh, it all happened in, you know, from mid-March on. If you back, think back to mid-March, I mean, we were 
uh, accelerating in the uh, deepest uh, financial trough that we'd been in, uh, even deeper uh, than the the the, uh, the uh, changes immediately preceding the Great Depression. Um, you know, 30, 35 percent correction in in whatever it was, twenty eight days beat the uh, Great Depression by two days in terms mm -hmm. of uh, that uh, that acceleration, that deceleration, I should say. Uh, so um, that that was kind of the backdrop to all of this. It takes tremendous fortitude um, on the part, really, of Anthony and 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 that board to um, to finish a deal. Forbes wrote it up as the first uh, uh, all virtual deal in history. Um, all of the diligence was done virtually um, because of the pandemic. Um, so there's a lot of notoriety to it in that regard. But yeah, we were we were just um, uh, feeling like we had a a shared mission and shared opportunity here, and right. uh, I'm a big believer in that. Uh, and there's a role model for this in the in the um, in the in the industry. Uh, you know, you look at Amazon; they've got this great consumer business, right? Um, and uh, AWS is this tremendous infrastructure business. But one of uh, AWS's uh, biggest clients is uh, is actually. Uh, Netflix, which is a big competitor to Amazon on the video on the video on demand side, so um, you know that uh, that that uh, uh, interesting dynamic uh, is there, and uh, we believe will play out and play out well. And, and the receptivity to the combination of SoFi and Galileo has been tremendous. Uh, our clients have all all gre uh, greeted it with uh, um, you know eagerness because it it really provides them opportunity. So even though you know SoFi um, has a number of different products which are directly competitive with many of your clients, um, and obviously you talk about the Amazon and Netflix example, which they're obviously directly competitive. So despite that, you're not. There hasn't been anyone who's sort of getting nervous about well, what's gonna, what's this gonna mean for us when uh, you know when when you really if you're owned by SoFi, you know how like is, is everyone? It sounds like what you're saying is. There's no one that's that's expressed uh, expressed sort of um, some hesitation with continuing to do business with you guys. Yeah, we're, largely what we're seeing is uh, meeting the deal with uh, you know open arms, embracing the opportunity. Um, Galileo is committed to being an independent business. Uh, we're ring, ring fencing the data and data sharing. Um, you know, we're doing that uh, not only from a policy perspective, but contractually. Uh, we're we're putting in place the things that are needed to make sure that uh, our our clients protecting our clients uh, information, uh, client information, roadmap strategies, et cetera, is key to what we do. We already power, um, you know, we power. I mentioned uh, a few of our clients, but we power, um, you know, competitors today, if you will. So uh, we're not in the business of sharing that information, um, you know, between one client and another client. Um, it's uh, that that doesn't serve our our power or their purpose. Right. And so, SoFi is uh, really no different. Um, we'll, uh, <clears throat> you know, we'll, we'll, as I said earlier, we'll make, make available these products and, and uh, that's the overall strategy. But having Galileo remain independent, um, serving the um, broader financial uh, services industry, um, serving FinTech uh, specifically uh, is, a, is uh, absolutely the directive and, and the mission. Right, right. So is it, because obviously SoFi has a range of different products, um, but is this um, what your clients are most interested in? Is it the is it the lending access to sort of the the lending machine that SoFi has done, or is there or is there something more? Uh, well, we're we we've got a number of products that are on the roadmap. If you think about um, the um, SoFi Invest um, product. Uh, which is a uh, fee-free fractional uh, share kind of capability um, all on market. Um, you know, Galileo, uh, we, we intend to make that product available also through our APIs. Um, our expansion, we haven't talked much about our expansion into Latin America. We're really into, uh, we're also uh, expanding into uh, Asia Pacific. We recently uh, purchased, purchased a broker dealer there um, and, um, and we will drive. We will power the cash management solution uh, for that. Um, uh, for that, but in uh, and the meanwhile, we'll also go into Hong Kong and uh, provide uh, capabilities. To the other 160 fintechs that are there, uh, we're moving into um, into Singapore and into Japan as well. Um, and uh, I've had a lot of inbound uh, interest from that region over the last several months, really since the uh, 
the announcement of the the SoFi uh, acquisition. So um, there's a lot that we're that we're doing uh, there, and it isn't limited to U.S. lending. Um, uh, we're seeing opportunity that's uh, more global and more expansive than that. Right, right, for sure. Um, and the, and so it sounds so from what you're saying. In a lot of these regions, there really isn't a Galileo equivalent. Um, is that is that what you're finding when you, yeah, when you go around the really world? True. Yeah, very true. You know, we we've seen this in Latin America and you know, moved into Latin America. And uh, you mentioned New Bank earlier; they they had to solve the problem uh, themselves. Um, um, but as they've uh, looked to expand outside of Brazil, they're looking beyond that. Um, you know, same thing with Walla as they've uh, looked to expand into Mexico and Colombia and beyond Argentina. Um, if you look at Asia Pacific, there's really no capability there. And uh, that's that's true, um, you know, to be honest, um, despite some of the success in in uh, the UK, I mean, look at the infrastructure providers there and, and they're somewhat limited as well. So there really is a global opportunity um, to, to take these services, uh, you know, uh, international. Okay, so, so, so last question as we wrap up, um, I'm, you know, you, you talked about international, you talked about, you know, Google uh, and Galileo Instant. Um, what's, what's sort of the, the focus for the next 12 months? Is it really, um, you know, you'll maybe just answer that question open-ended. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's two or three things. So it's focusing on the, the integration of um, the uh, lending products, um, uh, API-based enablement of the lending products. It's continuing the expansion into Latin America. We've identified beyond Mexico, we've identified six countries. Uh, we're moving very quickly right now into Brazil and Colombia, um, but um, right behind that will be four additional countries uh, in Latin America. We're also expanding into Asia Pacific uh, now, uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, uh, Hong Kong, um, Japan, and Singapore. Uh, and um, uh, so that that's a, a big part of uh, what we're doing over the next 12 months. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, Galileo Instant will have launched. Uh, we've uh, we've we've had a um, a lot of interest and excitement around that. Um, lots of clients have actually already integrated to it, and uh, the big launch will come um, here in the next uh, call it 30 days. And uh, it's going to be exciting to watch that product um, begin to emerge as a as a kind of new way of doing business in fintech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see. We'll be following along. Uh, Clay, I very much appreciate you coming on the show today. Peter, thanks for having me. I uh, really appreciate it. Okay, see ya. Thank you.